It's draft day in the NHL. What type of action could the Maple Leafs get themselves into today? And could we finally see some UFAs retained by the Buds? We'll get into all of that and more on today's edition of the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Oh, Dave, I butchered the, the, the start, the intro worse than Biden butchered everything he said in that presidential debate. Uh, man, I apologize for everyone who had to listen through that opening 15 seconds there uh but hello and welcome into the locked on lease podcast a daily maple leaf centric podcast hosted by myself mike de stefano and my co-host dave morisuti dave what's your golf handicap at since that seems to be the topic of conversation in the world today for absolutely no apparent reason i have never once in my life ever tried to figure out my handicap I don't even think I've ever been asked until today what my golf handicap is. Did you ever think that there'd be a a pissing match over ha- your golf handicap in a presidential debate? Boy, that was that was some theater we got to witness. Well, considering the combined age of those two candidates, I'm not surprised. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It, it, the fact Biden came out and said he was what a six handicap or something. I'm like. Dog, you can barely walk downstairs, let alone swing a golf club. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. There's no way I'm believing that he is a six handicap just based on what we witnessed last night and him walking up and downstairs on a daily basis. Anyways, this is not a political talk show. It's a hockey talk show, and we got a lot to get to. So let's 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 not talk about that nonsense anymore. Uh, it's draft day, one of my favorite days of the year. It's a massive weekend. I mean, Everything's coming so quick. It's it's just insane. Like we saw the Stanley Cup get awarded on Monday, and then on Thursday we had the award ceremony wrap up, and then it's draft day by Friday and free agency on Monday. Within a week, within a week, we've seen the cup handed out. We've seen all the awards handed out. We'll see the draft come and go, and free agency will begin. What a crazy week it's been, and still is going to be. This weekend's gonna be lit, brother. Oh, especially for the uh, reporters that have gone literally from covering the Stanley Cup final to go to Vegas and cover the the awards and the draft. Like, I don't know if you li- I li- like I listened to Elliot you Freeman today on on the radio, and I mean somebody made a great comment to him that he read a text saying, "You sound like you're ha- you're hacking a pack of darts," because <laughs> his voice is just like I. He should have probably have given a, given himself a couple of days there, but the travel I'm sure wasn't did not help the cause. Well, you can't. I mean, what couple of days are you gonna give? I mean, you're in Florida Friday night or Monday night, right? You're in Florida Monday night. You're there covering the the broadcast until the wee hours of the night. Probably didn't get out of there till you know midnight one o'clock, and then you're probably not getting on a flight home until Tuesday. You go home, you pick up your suit. And then you're back for by Wednesday, you know, the very next day he's, he's packing up and going to Vegas. And then Thursday, you got the award ceremony. You've got the draft today on Friday, tomorrow draft as well. And then you got to fly back to Toronto and get ready to go for free agent frenzy on Monday. It's insane. There's no time. Like there's just no time for anyone who's covering all of these events to to sit, relax, and chill. So shout out kudos, kudos to all those, uh, you know, national writers who are, covering uh covering the shows and and covering all the news for us it's a lot of fun we'll get into a lot of what's uh what's being discussed and kind of the rumor roundup the latest we're hearing not only with the maple Leafs but also around the league saw some signings and some trades go down the day before i would imagine we'll see some more signings and trades go down uh later on today or by the time this podcast has been listened to by some of y'all probably some more stuff has happened um, but let's start with last night, what we witnessed, the NHL award ceremony. Uh, no real surprises. I mean, we, we debated whether or not Matthews had a shot to win the Ted Lindsay. Um, I think 69 goals is, is outstanding and definitely I thought he had a chance to win it, but ends up going to Nate McKinnon, big Nate ends up, uh, getting the sweep there with the Ted Lindsay and the Hart trophy outside of that. 
Quinn Hughes, who we fully anticipated to get the Norris, ends up getting that one. Connor Hellebuck, near unanimous decision. One person, one person uh, did not vote for Connor Hellebuck. Uh, and I think it was Bobrovsky who got the the lone first place vote other side of, out of Hellebuck. Yeah, so Bobrovsky got one uh, vote. Uh, and then we saw, obviously, Connor Bedard roll through and win himself uh, a Calder called a trophy um that that miss out on anything anything of significance i mean it was just the show just remains one of those like you watch it to watch see who wins but you don't watch it for what happens during the show like yeah can i be honest i I didn't watch watch it i'll be honest with you i I, thought uh, there's there's no reason for me to sit here and watch this show it's gonna be boring they're gonna have some stupid host that's gonna make dumb jokes it's not going to be entertaining, and I'm just at the end of the night. I'm just going to keep up with Twitter to see who won. And it was the most predictable show, most predictable year, I guess, of award voting that I've ever seen. So, it, to me, it wasn't even worth watching. To be honest, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. I, I just wanted to watch for the Ted Lindsay. Obviously, um, I also had uh, a. a friend of my cousins who won the Willie O'Ree award, Mark DeMontis. Shout out to him. Canadian oh, cool. blind hockey player. Wow. Uh, yeah, just an incredible story. And uh, so I thought they were going to actually do something on the stage. Didn't didn't happen. Um, he did go up on the stage at the end of the night, but I thought they were going to do some sort of segment that didn't really pan out um, or happen. But yeah, I know like the, the <laughs> I, being in the sphere was cool i'm assuming and all that stuff but i don't know they it's so nhl the way they do these awards just no personality they try to do this bit with kutrov which failed <laughs> epically like it was terrible i think the nhl needs to rethink who what was the bit i i, I saw you guys talking about it on discord i, I didn't have a chance literally to had a, look at it literally had a guy try to pretty much uh be kutrov the host i don't know who even know who the host was trying to pretty much be kutrov put on like a fake beer start speaking in a russian accent talking about like just ask him like the general reporter questions too that's why he even made him more cringe and kutrov was just like i i don't want to talk to this guy <laughs> <laughs> it, it it was trying to be funny it didn't did, land and yeah did the nhl not learn from the all-star no. game from how no. much kudrov does not want to be at these events like yeah mm-hmm. i mean could have told you that one uh but yeah so no 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 big surprises uh but congratulations to everyone who won that's kind of the 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 wrap really of the 23 24 season Right. And the draft kind of begins a new year. You've got a bunch of new blood coming into the NHL. You're going to see a bunch of trades go down uh, later on today. So why don't we take a quick break? We'll come back and we'll start with uh, the rumor roundup. We'll start with what's going on in Maple Leafs land, uh, kind of what we're hearing from all the insiders. Uh, and we can get to our lease news and talk about some of the other deals that went down throughout the day and how it impacts the Toronto Maple Leafs ultimately. Uh, and you know, it's, it's it's draft day, so we uh, we forgot to do a draft profile yesterday. I didn't forget, but we ran out of time. So we've got a double dosage for you uh, to round out our five Maple Leafs draftees that we believe uh, the Maple Leafs should target. So we've got two guys, Adam Yurichek and Andrew Basha, one defense, one forward, and we'll break those down for you guys in a little bit. Uh, I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morissuti. You're listening to the Lockdown Leafs podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep a ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. 
Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. Mike Giuseppe and Dave Morissuti with you as we are each and every weekday here on the Locked On Leafs podcast, wherever you get your podcasts from and also up on YouTube. If you are enjoying the content, you want to make sure that you are locked into what's going on with the Maple Leafs all summer long. Make sure that you are subscribed uh, via the Locked On Leafs podcast again on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast from. That'd be greatly appreciated, and we'll try and deliver you uh, the best uh, Leafs updates and analysis we possibly can on a daily basis here on the Locked On Leafs podcast. And with that, let's talk about some of the things that we're hearing about the Toronto Maple Leafs on draft day or leading up to it. Um, so we'll get to the draft and, and the draft pick in, in a little bit and talk about some of the the – um, draftees that could be available for Toronto. I picked number 23, but let's start with what's going on in, uh, in Toronto when it comes to Tyler Bertuzzi, because we had a report yesterday, Chris Johnston on insider trading, uh, reporting that it sounds as though Tyler Bertuzzi is actually keen on staying in Toronto, uh, might be willing to work with the Leafs on a deal, perhaps take less money if he can get some term on his contract. What do you make of this report, Dave? Yeah, I think the big one here is, you know, there's been a lot of mixed signals about Tyler Bertuzzi and what he's looking for. Um, I think the big one here is he's basically saying, I'm not like, pay me this or I'm going to go and test free agency. He's actually willing to, you know, do what it takes to stay. Part of that is, you know, using a bit of like, give me a little more term. I'll take less money, right? Because this is a guy who is coming off a one-year deal, right? And so, yeah, maybe teams will offer him a multi-year deal, but they might not offer him the dollars that he wants. And and sometimes, and, and we, we're we seeing this right now, with a lot of deals getting done, some players are just comfortable staying in the situation that they like and they know. I think maybe that's a little bit of like that for Bertuzzi. We're talking about a guy who went from, Last, I mean, the year before, Detroit to Boston and then Toronto. So guys like that don't necessarily always like to move around that much. I think maybe that's also going to play a factor. And also a new coach, right? Get a chance to play and maybe something that a system that might gravitate a little more towards him. Because remember that tough start that he got off to, then he eventually found his stride. So I, I, I just think that, you know, I, the Leafs have the ability to offer a little more term. in. Because really term for them is, as when we talked about this, the term isn't the huge deal. It's more so the dollar amount because they really don't have, they have a tight budget for their forwards this year. Yeah, 100%. We we listened to what Brad True Living had to say yesterday ahead of uh, the draft. And if you missed that episode, go back and listen because we, we played the audio um, from Brad True Living's media session that he had. But he pretty much explicitly said, you know, before we put money towards Fords, like we got to make sure that we have enough money to allocate to work on the blue line because that's kind of the number one priority for the Maple Leafs. So uh, although, yes, they would like to, you know, bring in Bertuzzi and Bertuzzi would like to return, but the Leafs, they, they've they kind of got their number. Like they know how much that they're willing to spend on a forward. And if that is a number that works for Bertuzzi, great. I think the Maple Leafs are ready to bring him back. I think they liked what Todd, uh, Todd what Tyler Bertuzzi um, gave them, especially down the stretch. And, and I think he even has a little bit more to offer uh, what we saw in the second half. So I think if they can get him in a, in a solid deal, if they have to give him term doesn't scare me much on a guy like, like Bertuzzi, to be honest with you, it really doesn't. So if you got to give him, you know, a fourth, fifth, sixth year, whatever, so be it. If that can buy you down another, you know, million dollars, let's say on the total AAV, I think that helps the, the Maple Leafs in this kind of win now mode, this window of four years that, you know, you have Austin Matthews, in the full in the in the in the fold here, they can kind of worry about that down the road, right? You can worry about his term down the road and if that becomes problematic at some point. Um, so we'll see when it comes to Tyler Bertuzzi. But it's nice to to hear that he is willing to negotiate and uh, does want to come back. So maybe we will see something come through between those two guys. Doesn't sound as likely for Max Domi though. 
It sounds like Domi might have a, a, a number in mind, and if the Maple Leafs don't meet it or match it, he might be willing to test free agency a little more than Bertuzzi. Is that kind of the sense you're getting to? I think I heard Elliot Friedman say four by four is what Domi was looking for around that, mm-hmm. which that, and I think the Leafs are are looking looking less than that. Like if you're gonna give term again. It's gotta be you got you gotta work with us a little bit here on on the money. We like the lease would give Domi term. This is not a guy who's old, right? He's in the prime right now. But you can't sit there and say, Yeah, we'll give you exactly what you want. If you want if Domi wants to stay in Toronto, I think that's the thing that maybe the Leafs can really play at here. He loved it here. He really everyone's been kind of saying that Domi really wants to stay in Toronto. Listen, I think the Leafs are going to have to test that a little bit. And if Domi wants to go elsewhere and and get that long term deal exactly what he wants, he's gonna. It, it, you have to it, you have to be reasonable if you're Brad Living on how much you give out to every single one of the guys you want to bring back. Yeah, I'm I'm going to remain you know steadfast on this point. I, I really do think it's one or the other. Unless you're moving on from Mitch Marner, different conversation. Yeah. But if you don't have anything in place to move on from Marner, I don't think you can bring them both back. So you've got to make your decision. It's either going to be Bertuzzi or it's going to be Domi uh, or it's going to be Marner gone and you have money now to retain them both. So all three will not be returning next year. That I firmly believe. I don't think they can afford it. And certainly one of those guys cap, you know, numbers will be going towards the blue line and going towards the back end. Maybe not all or two, but at least one of them uh, will be reallocated their dollars. So uh, between the the three, I think Marner's most likely to return on the count of he has a contract for next season. And, you know, a trade at this point seems a little less likely uh, than it may be originally sounded. And then it sounds like Bertuzzi's willing to play ball a little bit more than, than Domi and Bertuzzi's the better player ultimately. Um, so, uh, if I had to, if I had to guess, I would think if if two of the three are coming back, probably Domi and Marner, which means don't or uh, sorry Bertuzzi and Marner, which means Domi might be uh, might be hitting free agency come July one. But we'll see. Anything can happen over the next uh, over the next few days. So that's something to to obviously keep an eye on. Uh, in terms of what we've been hearing about players that the Maple Leafs are certainly intrigued in for free agency. We talked about them wanting to allocate some uh, attention to the blue line. Chris Tanev has been a player that's come up a lot this off season. And Chris Tanev, there's an obvious connection with him and Brad Tuliving, the general manager for the Maple Leafs was the GM in, in Calgary when he originally signed him uh, in his first, you know, f- uh, foray into unrestricted free agent uh, status when he signed him out of Vancouver. So, you know, they know each other well. Tanev is from Toronto. Uh, there was, you know, reports that he considered Toronto the first time around. So, you know, things things are aligning for Tanev to maybe finally make his way uh, to the six, come home, and potentially be a perfect right shot uh, first pairing partner for Morgan Riley. However, there are now reports coming out that the Dallas Stars, rightfully so, are making a late push to try and get Chris Tanev extended and not allow him to hit the open market. You did see that they uh, plan to buy out uh, Ryan Suter, uh, which will open up some cap space for them to do so. Um, it's upsetting because I, I really it really want Chris Tanev at this point. Like for you, is, is there a, a plan B? Is there an option B that makes sense? Or is it like, man, they, they, they just they got to get a Tanev? I mean, um, Tanev has always been the number one target for Bradshaw Living. Like, you know that it's been made known ever since the trade deadline where he did, could not get the deal done for both him and Zadorov. Uh, like, screw the Dallas Stars. Like, that's like, just go away. Like, go, go find somebody else. Um, I like, I understand the Stars' point of view when you got a guy like that that's that worked well for you. You're, you're gonna do what you can to get that done, but um, I, I do wonder. My only concern here, and look, I have no problem giving him term. It's how much do you really push 
to get a Chris Tanev, right? If you're Brad you're living, because you you do need to add more than one defenseman, and that's been made that that's been made known. I don't think anyone's argued against that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I'm wondering too, does a guy like Matt Roy pop up on the radar? That's another name that I've heard for the Leafs. Like he's not he's not Chris Tanev, but I have heard that a lot of people like what he can do. And we do know that the Kings are basically saying, hasta la vista, you're not like, they're not bringing him back. Yeah. Matt Roy is, uh, his name has been out there for the Maple Leafs over the last couple of days. Like someone's put the bug in the ear and leaking out that the Leafs have interest in Matt Roy. I'd imagine it's the agent at this point. Um, but yeah, like I've heard Chris Johnston talk about it. I've heard Pierre LeBron talk about it. I've heard, uh, Darren Dreger talk about it. I wouldn't be surprised if, if Elliot was talking about it at some point on one of his radio hits, but Matt Roy has been linked to Toronto by a couple of people. So, uh, it is interesting. He does sound like a likely and logical replacement candidate, you know, six foot two, 210 pounds. You know, he, he's a physical player. He's got a little bit of two-way upside to him. You know, 106 points throughout his career. He was a, um, you know, a plus player throughout his season. He's got a little bit of, uh, a little bit of success, obviously, in, uh, in the playoffs, or a little bit of experience, rather, playing in the playoffs. So, uh, plays a physical game. We'll see. I would prefer Taneb, obviously, but depending on the contract, uh, you know, Matt Roy could be a decent option behind him maybe even a Brandon Montour if he ends up hitting the the free agent market but is there another avenue that the Maple Leafs might decide to go in to upgrade their blue line if Chris Tanev comes off the board in the next little bit let's talk about some possible trade candidates on the other side some players that we're hearing may be available on the market that might fit and look good in the blue and white We'll get to that next here on the Locked On Lease podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. I love sports. I love them so much that I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games and the sports aren't sports and like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I got to do is open up the app and dream up bets at any time that I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and start making the most of your summer. And hey, don't forget, Blue Jays still playing. I know it hasn't been great so far, but they're coming off a win. You're starting to see George Springer start to turn it around. Another betting opportunity for you over on FanDuel. It's the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. The Locked On Lease podcast continues with Mike DiStefano and Dave Morasuti. It's draft day, and uh, the draft is often a place where we see, obviously, you know, we see young players start their NHL careers, and all these draft picks are uh, are going to be, you know, starting day one of being an NHLer. Um, but we also, it's it's a time for GMs to make some of the biggest trades uh, and franchise altering trades. Um, it's a chance for some teams to get some money off the books so that they can gear up if they've got something that they want to do for free agency or if they got some free agents of their own that they want to retain and they need a little bit more cap space for. And it's a good chance for teams who have cap space to acquire some players. The, uh, just like we saw the Washington Capitals today acquiring Andrew Mungiapani from the <laughs> Calgary Flames for a second-round pick. I don't know about you, Dave. I thought that was an absolute steal. I think Mungiapani is a terrific player. Had a little bit of a down year, I guess, this season, but he's a guy who's scored, like, what do you have, 35, 36 goals a couple years ago? Two-way yeah. player, plays the game the right way. I, I, I was floored to see him go for just a second-round pick. He's got term on his deal, too. Uh, and it's yeah. not a terrible contract at 5.8. I ah, thought that yeah. was a steal. A future two? I would have paid that if I was Toronto. Yeah, one year, a one, yeah, to get him even for the one year of 5.8 million. Like, this is a guy who clearly could play in your top six. Uh, 30, I think it was 36 of the 40 points he scored this year were at five on five. Like, this is not a guy who got a lot of power play time in Calgary because they went younger. I know why Calgary did this. They're 
they're going like they're pretty much doing a scorched earth, but like yeah. Let let me put context to that five on five point uh, mm-hmm. total you just threw out there. That's generally the same amount of five on five points that like Tavares gets, and mm-hmm. Tavares is getting paid how much? Double. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Continue. So I, yeah, like you got to go after teams that are clearly. There's not, I would say there's a cap crunch, but like they want to make improvements and they may need, they may have a surplus in players in one area. Like Calgary's trying to get younger. So they're letting go a lot of their veteran guys. It's been like this for the last, since Craig Conroy took over. Yeah. So the Leafs right now are in a position where they, like, obviously there's more certainty with the trade route. Yeah. You don't want to give up assets to go and get a guy, if, especially if you can sign free agency. But in free agency, a lot of teams right now have a lot of dough to spend and the competition is not going to be easy. And that competition is what drives up prices. So why not consider the trade route and get a more of a sure thing? Exactly. Um, so that's exactly what we're going to look at. So let's say Chris Tanev is not available or they think that Tanev is going to cost too much money or they think that he's going to return to Dallas and they turn to option B. Is it someone on the free agent market? Maybe. Could possibly be a Matt Roy. Could possibly be a Brandon Montour. uh, Maybe a Brett Pesci. Or they could target a couple of the players that are now reportedly being shopped around at the draft. And two players in mind uh, that I think kind of fit what the Leafs are looking for. One, Aaron Ekblad. Stanley Cup winning Aaron Ekblad reportedly being shopped by the Florida Panthers and then the choo choo truba train also being shopped by the New York Rangers. They're looking to maybe move on from their captain and open up some cap space. So would either of those two interest you in a possible trade, Dave? Well, the issue with Ekblad has not been performance. It's always been health. He has always struggled to stay healthy. But as we saw, when he is healthy, he's a top pairing, right shot defenseman uh, who just went in a a seven game battle with Connor McDavid and came out on top. And this is somebody I know the Leafs at one point when they when Ekblad was heading into the draft as a first overall pick. I think the Leafs tried to make a deal to try to get first overall, which. I think they were. I think that was the Willie draft, if I'm not mistaken. Twenty. Uh, yes. Yes, it was. So, I mean, it, it kind of worked out for Toronto. I would say. I mean, Ekblad would have been a great pick, but also yeah. they still got Neil Anderson. So I don't think they were too. It didn't work out too badly. Um, yeah, for him, it's just it's just the injury concern I have. Truba, obviously, the concern I have. You have eight years. I sorry, eight million dollars for the next two years. He's taken a step back, though. Like I, I will say this. I would imagine. I don't know this for fact. Obviously, I would imagine that any Truba deal, there's Mm -hmm. going to be retention by New York. I think New York knows that that they no one's going to take on that full deal. But you know, at maybe four, if you can get fifty percent of it taken. Four million, five million, six million, maybe, but somewhere between four and six. Now you've got a little yeah. bit of my attention. Yeah, because the thing here with uh, with Truba, um, I think a buyout costs the Rangers four millions over four million dollars over two years. I think it's two million dollars in the two years after that. So they don't want to do a buyout, but at the same time. Might as well get something back if you're gonna if you if you were looking to move on. Well, if you're I gonna just, spend four million for the next two years, yeah. I mean, you could get an asset for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like like take take bite the bullet and see if you can get an asset back. And with Truba, like we know he's physical. If if you play him the right way, he can be just a, a nemesis to go up against. But he's also a nemesis that. He he like against the Panthers. You saw he was a bit a step a, a step slow, mm-hmm. and again, there's always the problem of he's a very physical player, but likes to cross the line a little bit. Now I know some people are going to think that that's not going to fly in Toronto, 
it's not going to fly anywhere. He's like, he plays for the New York Rangers. You can't get more high profile than the Rangers. Yeah. Right. So I, I like Truba. I, I also know that the whole reason why he's in New York is he didn't want to stay in Winnipeg because he wanted to be closer to his, where his wife was working in New York. Right. That is true. Yeah, that was the thing. She had like a, a residency, I think, in New York yeah, somewhere. She... Wife works in uh, in the hospital. Yeah, that's a good point. And I, I, I totally forgot about that. Uh, we always forget about that when we talk. We talk about these players like as if they don't have lives. <laughs> like it's mm -hmm. could you imagine if, if uh, you know, someone randomly was talking about you and they're like, yeah, we'll just send Dave. We'll just send him out to like Detroit. You know, just nonchalantly. Yeah, we'll just we'll just send Dave to Detroit and he can work out there, not care give any care about what's going on, the roots that he's established in that city. Or no, no one would care. No. It's kind of funny how we talk about players like that. Um but as the player, <laughs> I would think there would be some pretty good interest from from the Maple Leafs. Like you think about the type of player that Brad True Living is trying to bring in, like he checks all the boxes, right? Like he's a guy who's who's big. He's physical, hits like a truck, um, and you know he's got that leadership in it. Didn't he just win the Messi leadership award? Yeah. Technically, um, well, so, he's, a, know, he's a, a great leader. leader. Like that's that... captain, right? Right, plays for an original six franchise. Like you know, Truba. Look, I I, I think if you can get him at the right price, um, I don't think it would cost a lot. Like he's almost a cap dump at that price, even at fifty percent. You know, retention it's probably not going to cost a, a whole lot to, to bring that guy in. They're just hoping that they can move on from him so they can just clear up space so they can make the moves that they deem necessary themselves to, to make the, to make their squad better. So uh, Truba would be a player of interest for me. If, if at all possible, I'm going to add one more thing to the act plaid. Cause um, some people want to know he has one more year left at 7.5 million currently has a no movement clause. But on July 1st, that shifts to a 12-team no-trade list. On July 1st, it shifts? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So you, you get you get a few, you get some talking, a little, little chatter going on. You don't get the guy you want in free agency. Come swing by and see if we can uh, make that deal happen on July 1st. Could possibly, could possibly make that happen, potentially. Left shot, though. I, Ekblad's a left shot, isn't he? Uh, yes, because like ninety nine percent sure. Which, whatever. I mean, it, it's not. Right. Why do you keep saying huh? right? Shot? I, I'm just trying to make him a right. No, he's a right shot. Sorry, he's a right I shot. Forcing is the left shot on that pairing. Right. That is that is correct. That is correct. So I mean, you bring him in. Whether you play him with, you probably play him. Uh, either Jake McCabe, I guess, could be the the partner for Morgan Riley. I guess. I suppose it's possible. I mean, it's possible to bring in both players, to be honest, actually. <laughs> like, bring in a, a Tanev and, like, an Ekblad or a Truba, potentially. It would be um, nice. Would be nice. Would be nice. They did say they want to add two top four defensemen. That would be adding two top four defensemen. Uh, potentially a goaltender as well. I heard potentially Philip Gustafson is still someone the Leafs may be keeping an eye on. I mean, he's kind of the only goaltender out there now who's like oh, ready and there. capable. Yeah, being like a tandem role, tandem goaltender. So uh, that'd be interesting. And and I did see David Pagnata in his latest rumblings piece note that uh, the Wild's still interested in shopping Gustafson and Marco Rossi. I don't know why. Why Marco Rossi? I don't get it. I don't get that one at all. Uh, do you got something to say? Sorry. Well, I'm just sorry. I just wanted to say my condolences on UC Saros, who is signing his new deal in yeah. Nashville. Yeah. And, uh, and, and condolences to the people in the Discord who have been talking about UC Saros. And they refuse. They're still, if you go to the Discourse right, uh, Discord right now, I'm going to throw the link in the description. Oh. There's is it a sign and trade? Is it a sign and trade? Yeah, they're still going to Nashville. Don't worry. It's this. They're, they're just they're just preparing for the next move. I'm like, oh my god. It's the sign and trade. Sign and trade. Soros going to Toronto, and Marner's going to go to Nashville. That's what's happening. That's all this is guaranteed. 
Uh, all right. Happens, we're in, like we're gonna get egged on like so badly, <laughs> but no, it's probably not happening, guys. <laughs> no, no. Although Askarov, hmm, mm. mm. okay. Maybe. I mean, look, you, if you're a young girl tender like Askarov, and all of a sudden now, Pe- uh, I was about to say Pecorini, UC Saros is hanging around for seven years, seven years. Doesn't exactly bode too well for him. No, no, it does not. So that's a name to keep an eye on. Actually, a new name entering the goalie market potentially could be uh, could be Askarov. So Askarov or Gustafson, one of those two, I'd be okay with. Um, as for who the Leafs could draft tonight, we've got two players we're going to break down here for uh, for the final two guys on our kind of our, our locked on Leafs. You know, five players to target for the Maple Leafs in the draft. They pick at number 23. Uh, they have in total one, two, three, four, five, six picks, right? One, two, three, yeah. They have six picks in total in this draft uh, today. They got pick number 23, and then they don't pick again until pick 120. So 23 and then pick 120. And they got a bunch of picks in the 150s. They got one at 151, 152, and then 157. And they don't pick again until pick 200 and then pick 216 to round things out. So um, they could potentially move up and down, gain picks, lose picks, whatever they end up doing. Uh, could be some movement here. We did hear last night, Brad True Living said, you know, it's possible that they could – move down and collect more assets. Uh, If, you know, a cluster of players are still available as they're approaching pick number 23, uh, which is totally possible. Uh, But with that, let's talk about maybe some of the players who they'd be interested if available still at pick number 23. Who do you want to start with first, Juracek or Basha? Oh, we were supposed to do Juracek yesterday, so we might as well give him his due and get him get him started with. Cool. So why don't we uh, listen from uh, Sebastian High of Locked On NHL Prospects. He could tell us a quick little scouting report on Eurocheck, and then we can give our thoughts on the other side. Andrew Basha might be the paciest forward in the 2024. Let's not do that guy. That was Basha. That's... Yep. That was Basha. You sure you don't want to start Basha? You kind of. No, no. I, I, I apologize to Adam. We're going to get with you now. Is Adam Eurocheck the biggest wild card eligible in the 2024 NHL draft? I'm Sebastian High from Locked On NHL Prospects, ready to give you a breakdown. Your check is a six foot two, 168 pound right shot defenseman who played in the Czech Pro League last season with HC Pilsen. He scored one assist in 19 games before falling down to injury with a really, really bad knee injury at the World Junior Championship, ending his season. And he has a really long developmental runway. He's going to need three to four years before making the NHL because of pretty chaotic decision making and a proneness to mistakes. But The tools are really, really good. He plays with vicious physicality. He's a really good uh, skater with his edge work specifically. And the offensive flair he's shown against junior competition is a lot to build off of. Uh, Think flashes of Rasmus Ristolainen, especially in the most recent season with the Flyers. For more on Eurocheck and all other NHL prospects, check us out at Locked On NHL Prospects on YouTube or wherever you find your podcasts. He had me in the first half, and then he threw a Rasmus Ristolainen. in. As the- yeah, I was just like, <laughs> like, 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 oh, it's Bastion. No, no. Well, he's he's kind of revived his career a little bit yeah. in uh, in Philadelphia, but you know, I think I think Juracek has a chance to be better than than Ristolainen, To to be honest with yeah. you, I mean, he's he's a big bodied right hand shot defenseman, six foot three. Uh, you know, 180 pounds, but he's got that size to put some meat on his frame and get to that uh, get to that two bill mark at some point. Two way defenseman, and uh, as Sebastian noted, did have a knee injury that ended his season this past year, so didn't get to play uh, after the the World Junior Championships, unfortunately. Um, but you know, he's a guy who a couple years ago in the U20 league. Um, Put up some decent numbers, 12 goals, 17 assists, 29 points in 41 games as, as a defenseman. And this is the little write-up blurb that uh, Elite Prospects has for their uh, David Juracek write-up. So they said, Juracek has the vision to identify the right play at pace and even the ability to deceive and manipulate opponents from the blue line to create those openings himself. And his touch as a passer beyond reproach. He can feather a puck through traffic with the best of them. 
Uh, so seemingly a very high upside pick. And if that name sounds familiar, Adam Juracek, it's because he is the younger brother of David Juracek, who was the number two overall draft pick uh, just a couple of years ago. Uh, Czech Republic? They're from the Czech Republic, the Juraceks? I think the Czechs. Yeah. The, the, uh, from Czechia. Czechia. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Czechia is what we now call it. Uh, so your check would be a solid selection if he is there uh, at pick number 23. I know that he's a guy who, and as Sebastian said, one of the wild cards of this draft, because I've seen him ranked as, as high as, you know, the early teens. Uh, and I've seen him ranked as, as low as the, the high 20s. So, you know, could go anywhere in between. Is he still there in the least pick at 23? I think the least would be ecstatic if he is. So Adam Juracek is uh, is another player to watch for tonight's draft uh, if available when the Leafs get on the clock at pick number 23. You want to tee up uh, Andrew Basha here, Dave? Now we'll get Andrew Basha. Andrew Basha might be the paciest forward in the 2024 NHL draft, but is his upside worth a first round pick? I'm Hattie Kalakesh from Locked On NHL Prospects, ready to give you the breakdown. Basha is a six foot, 185 pound left shot winger who played for the Medicine Hat Tigers in the WHL. He scored 30 goals and added 55 assists for 85 points in 63 games this year. And before this year, Basha used to be a pure bottom six checking forward, but he showed a lot of offseason growth and came back as a true dual threat goal scorer and playmaker without even losing his energy level or speed or physical. Physicality. So the combination of second line upside and that safe bottom six floor in Bash's game makes him absolutely worth a first round pick in my opinion. And a contender is going to laugh their way to the stage if he's available in the late 20s. For more on Basha and all things NHL draft, make sure to follow and subscribe to Locked on NHL Prospects on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you very much to Heidi Kalakesh. Um, you know what I like about Bash and, and he noted it, it's, it's somebody who you know, his offensive game really took a big leap this year. Um, you know, he was a bit more of a, a defensively reliable bottom six forward um, last season for the Medicine Hat Tigers. And this year as a younger group, he kind of got to flourish in a, in a, in a bigger role. Um, really skilled playmaking winger at this point. He's got good speed, high IQ, high compete. Um, and this is what uh, the elite prospects draft guide has to say about Basha. Bosch is a fast-moving, dynamic winger with playmaking and scoring ability. If that fails, he has the checking game to provide significant value as a bottom six energy forward, too. With his swift crossovers and handling moves, Basha carries the puck across blue lines. He cuts east-west and evades defenders, finds the gap in their coverage, and gets in. And as soon as he crosses into the offensive zone, he looks for outlets. Defenders converge on him, opening up great potential play. Sounds pretty solid to me. I take it. Sounds like, sounds like some, a player that the Leafs scouting staff would definitely be targeting. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. Like I think so. Players. Yeah. So Andrew Basha, another one of those players that, uh, that if available at pick 23, the Maple Leafs should have, uh, have their eye on them. And I'm, I, I am pretty sure. Let me go and take a look. I, I have the list. Yes. They did meet with Basha at the, um at the combine he was one of the the six players that it was reported that they met with at the at the combine so basha is definitely on their radar and if they're at 23 they would probably be be interested um just a reminder of who the other players were that they met with ej emery was another guy who uh who they were interested in he's also on our list he was the first player that we talked about on monday right hand defenseman Stian solberg the norwegian left shot defenseman six foot two 200 pounds at 18 years old someone who they met with at the draft combine as well and then a couple of guys who are considered uh maybe some lower uh lower in the draft prospects lucas Pedersen they met with and then jack pridham who is technically the son of brandon pridham the maple Leafs capologist and assistant general manager so that was interesting to to see his name kind of pop up there he's going to boston university next year um so we'll see what that was all about uh but so the fact that they met with basha though means that they're somewhat interested and based on what we just heard and and, and what I've kind of read and and seen Abasha, I think he would be a terrific addition to the Maple Leafs prospect pipeline. 
Well, they were just a few hours away from finding out who they do select at number pick 23. Do they keep the pick? I suppose it could be traded and they don't even get to make a selection at some point. Maybe they've got a deal in place to acquire a big time defenseman. Maybe there's some packaging of picks happening uh, elsewhere. Maybe, you know, could see a lot of things happen uh, in the next few hours leading up to the draft and certainly over the course of of the weekend. I think Dave and I, I think we're going to do an extra bonus podcast um, probably Saturday night after the draft kind of finishes up. We'll, 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 we'll recap the draft so that we've got uh, focused a full show on draft recap and what happens over the next kind of 24 to 48 hours. And then uh, we'll be ready to go for our usual Monday episode and Mondays July 1st. So it'll be a full on free agent frenzy preview. We'll take a look at what the Maple Leafs could do, should do, and maybe play a little matchmaker around the league with some of the top teams and top free agents available. So it's going to be a busy, fun weekend. So make sure you're subscribed to the Locked On These podcasts. We'll have a couple of shows be coming out over the next few days. Uh, so keep an eye on those. But that'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On These podcasts on all platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on X at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore more and Follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. We'll be back with another episode for you guys tomorrow. But until then, keep it locked right here on Locked On Leafs.